neurologist at the Department of Neurology at the University of Würzburg. I'm very happy to be here to tell you about a pain syndrome that we have been working on, the fibromyalgia syndrome. Patients with a fibromyalgia syndrome suffer from chronic widespread pain. That means pain that has been present for at least three months and that is present in different areas of the body. In addition, they have further symptoms like an increased sensitivity to pressure upon their muscles. And this sensitivity has even been used in the past with the so-called tender points to add to the diagnostic criteria of the syndrome. Nowadays, we more use further additional symptoms like depression, non-refreshed sleep, sleep disturbance, bladder disturbance, problems with concentrating, you name it. And um, the combination of a pain syndrome of unknown origin and this multitude of symptoms has brought at least some colleagues to classify fibromyalgia syndrome among the somatoform pain disorders. Now, I don't completely agree with this classification and maybe by showing you some of the research of my group, I can convince you of my opinion. We're a group that works very much on the peripheral nervous system and we have the techniques to do so. So we thought we should study our fibromyalgia patients with our methods to investigate the peripheral nervous system. The first thing we did was quantitative sensory testing. This is a psychophysical method where you apply stimuli like cold or warmth or a pinprick or a von Freiherr to the patient's skin and then measure their re reaction. For example, their threshold of noticing the stimulus or how painful a stimulus is. What you would expect in a fibromyalgia patient is that when you apply a pressure stimulus upon the muscle, there is an increased sensitivity. This is part of the definition of the syndrome. But what we also found and what we did not expect was that their thresholds for cold and warm stimuli were greatly increased compared to controls. This means that these small nerve fibers that conduct the warmth and the cold did not work properly. And uh, this is the same that we find in patients with a small fiber neuropathy. Now, um, this is only one method. So um, we tried to look whether this unexpected finding could be supported by other methods. The second method we used was one that is called pain-related evoked potentials. These are basically electrically evoked potentials, but the electrodes are special electrodes that just stimulate the A-delta fibers. The A-delta fibers, like the C fibers, are our nociceptors the small nerve fibers that conduct the painful stimuli. So we applied these electrodes to the hands, to the feet, and to the face of the patients, and we recorded from the scalp the evoked potential. Like in any other measurement of evoked potentials, you can measure a latency and a peak-to-peak -peak amplitude. When we looked at this peak-to-peak -peak amplitude, it was considerably lower in the patients with fibromyalgia syndrome than in our healthy controls and also than in our disease control group, which was a group of patients with major depression. And this was the same finding whether we recorded after stimulation from the hands, from the feet, or from the face. So this was an indication that there is something wrong with the A-delta fibers in these patients. The third method we used was a skin punch biopsy. We took skin punch biopsies from the patient's lower leg and upper leg and processed the samples, looked at them under the microscope and counted the intraepidermal nerve fibers. These are mainly C fibers, the C nociceptors that we all have in the skin. And when we counted these fibers after staining them by immunohistochemistry with PGP 9.5, we found that in our group of fibromyalgia patients, their density was a lot lower than in our normal controls and in our patients with depression. 
So this was the third method to show that there is something wrong with the nociceptors of these patients. So um, having found all this, the question is, how does this link into the complex pathophysiology of the fibromyalgia syndrome? Most people nowadays are quite certain that there are subgroups of patients in the fibromyalgia syndrome, and some may have a more peripheral, others may have a more central pathophysiology. If we do look at the periphery, the next question is, which type of fibers are lost? Are these specialized types of nociceptors? Which types of nociceptors are these? And does the loss of fibers alter the pain perception, or is it just an indicator of pathologically hyperactive fibers elsewhere in the body. The other point is we do have good indications that there are alterations also in the central nervous system of these patients, and there are many psychosocial aspects. So which is the interconnection with these peripheral nervous system findings? And these are exciting research questions for the next years. In summary, we have used three methods and shown by three methods that there are pathological findings in A delta and C fibers in the fibromyalgia patients. So there is a strong indication for a pathophysiological factor in the periphery. And this was shown in the skin, but an analogous pathology in muscle afferents is possible and should be looked at. So fibromyalgia syndrome is not only about central augmentation. And I think with our findings and the findings by others, we now have somatic findings that are too strong to allow the classification of fibromyalgia syndrome as a somatoform pain disorder. Now, these studies were the work of a team, of a large group of my team and collaborators, and uh, would not have been done without them. So I would like to thank my collaborators and my team for helping to pull this very large study through.